Hey guys, today we're continuing the series about making comics. I'm going to demo how I do my pencils and then I'm going to give you guys a list of quick tips and also some things to look at or research if you're interested in finding your own pencil style. This video is kind of picking up where we left off in the thumbnailing video. So if you haven't watched that already, that's probably a, a pretty good first step there. This is basically the demo that I did for that video. Um, to show the difference between thumbnails and pencils, but we're going to expand on this page a little bit more today. In the last video, I didn't really show how I made this first panel up at the top. That's kind of an establishing shot. Um, basically what I did was come in and add a perspective ruler, which I'm kind of terrible at using, but it worked out okay. And then I did all of the horizontal and vertical lines, and then I used a second pass and a straight line tool to kind of get a little bit more organic shapes, but also keep those straight lines for when I come back in ink. There's a range of different penciling styles that happen all across different kinds of comics and graphic novels. You can have things ranging from extremely loose pencils that leave a lot up to the interpretation of the person inking, and there's extremely um, tight pencils that basically the inks are just traced over all of the real decisions are made in the penciling process. Where you land on this is kind of dependent on if you are inking your own work, if you are sending it off to somebody else and you want a specific styling, um, you might go for a little bit more tight of, an, of a pencil just to make sure that the inker can interpret those a little bit better. If you are inking them yourself, you might go for more of a loose pencil so that you end up with more decisions and more organic sort of discovery that happens in the inks. I tend to fall somewhere in the middle. I want all of the details to be present and I want most of the placement to be finalized, but I still want to kind of discover the shadows and any hatching that I'm adding in the inks. There's a few things I look to lock down when I'm penciling a panel. If there is a animal or a human character in the panel, I want to make sure that the anatomy is as tight as I can get it and also is on model for the character. It can be really helpful to have a turnaround for this just um, because you are you have to kind of make sure that all of the proportions of the character in the face and, and the body are consistent throughout the comic. I want to make sure that the perspective is kind of consistent throughout each panel. So I don't try really hard to keep the perspective like dead on the money every time I'm, like I said, I'm terrible at using perspective rulers. So I kind of just get it close enough so that it feels right. And then I just go with that. There's a lot of crimes that you can kind of cover in the inks and with like detail placement if the perspective is a little bit wonky, but you want to make sure that your main lines are pretty solid. I also want to make sure I'm locking down all of the background elements placement, at least like the main shapes. If you have a bunch of buildings in the background, make sure you're at least getting like the horizon line and kind of the vague placement of each of the buildings. A lot of the time you'll come back and ink things later and realize, oh no, I've left way too many decisions for myself in the background <laughs> and you'll have to kind of stop inking and come back and do like a third pencil pass to add some detail to the background. And that's kind of annoying. It can really break up your flow. I also want to make sure that the speech bubbles and any text that I'm adding, whether that is sound effects or like you can see on the alarm clock here, I want to make sure that that's laid out pretty well. And I want to make sure that I have enough space for any text in the speech bubbles that I'm going to add. This page didn't really have any speech bubbles. If it had, I would have done that before I started penciling. So I would have added the speech bubbles right on top of the thumbnails, but after the panel uh, borders. Along those lines, I want to add any sound effect placement and make sure that the sizing is like readable, that the panel is not too like overbalanced by the sound effect, unless that's kind of what you're going for. This will allow me to kind of get an overview of the whole page and kind of what the text is going to look like with the images. And then last, probably most importantly, I want to make sure I'm nailing down all of the key things in the shot. So for uh, this panel that I'm working on here, the key thing is the face. So that's the first thing that I'm going to kind of attack here. And you can see I'm doing my underlying shapes. And then I'm going to come back and add details like the facial features and stuff on top of that 
we want to make sure that all of the key things that are supposed to be in the shot make it into the shot. If you're working from a script that someone else has written, um, it can be really helpful to kind of send off a thumbnail and kind of go back and forth with the author a little bit and make sure that you are getting everything in there that they envisioned. Definitely when we're penciling, even if you wrote your own script, it's helpful to kind of reference back to that and make sure that you're not forgetting anything critical. So on this panel in particular, you can see I've, I've kind of lost some of the details in the blue and I just kind of feel this out when this happens to me. So I'm going over things with red to kind of give myself a little bit clearer of a, of a design for the panel. This way I can kind of come back when I'm doing the inks and I don't really have to sort through too much of the blue sketch to get to like the heart of what I was trying to tell myself. A lot of the times when I'm inking these panels, I'm coming back after a couple of days up to like a couple of months, depending on what I'm working on at the time. So if I come back and I can't differentiate like what part of the pencil actually needs to be inked in, that's going to be a problem for future me. So I make sure that when I'm doing panels like this, I have a really clear vision for myself for later. Some things that I kind of leave for the inks would be any hatching um, that I'm adding, any big flat fills. You can see I've used kind of like a big shader brush to kind of fill the shadow underneath the alarm clock on that last panel. A lot of the time I'll just do a little X. I find that to be pretty helpful and that's a pretty common comics, um, I guess shorthand, pretty common comic shorthand for this area is supposed to be blacked out in the inks. You can see that a lot in um, Mike Mignola's pencil work. If you go check out Art of MM at Instagram, he has some really interesting process photos that he posts. He's one of my all-time favorite comic artists and he does a lot of like very cool pencils and he'll post sort of his thumbnail sometimes. It's really interesting to see his process. I also tend to leave any like lost edges. So edges where the line doesn't completely finish out. I'll leave those for the inks because I basically just want to have complete forms in my pencils. And so I'll make sure that if I'm planning to kind of leave a lost edge somewhere, I'll just, I'll make sure in the pencils that that, that form completes, that line follows all the way through. So seven little kind of tips that help me when I'm penciling. Take these as they work for you and leave what doesn't. Um, sketching the base forms over the thumbnails and then doing a second pass in a different color. You can see a lot of the time I'm using sort of a non-photo blue and a red that kind of contrasts interestingly. I picked that up from animating and it just really helps me with my comic pencils as well. It gives me a lot of contrast so that I can see details and things that I'm adding in the red super easily. You definitely don't have to use blue and red. You can use kind of any color that contrasts that helps you. A lot of people do their pencils in, um, you know, traditional pencil colors, black, blue, stuff like that. It might also help you to do your pencils for the foreground and the background in different colors. So you could do the background in blue and then do the foreground in red if that helps you differentiate things. It's kind of just test out a couple of different things and see how it works for you. When I'm penciling, I tend to use a little bit chunky of a brush. I do this intentionally so that I'm not too focused on teeny tiny details and I can kind of just get the broad strokes. I can then, if I need to refine things, come back, like I said, with the red pencil and do a little bit finer of a detail pass on things. But for the original like shapes and stuff, I tend to use kind of a larger brush than I would normally use for sketching. We kind of already talked about putting an X in areas that are going to be black in the inking. You can also do kind of various shades if you'd like or different colors for different areas. Um, if that will help you kind of differentiate where you want areas of fill. It kind of helps to move through things quickly when you're inking and then also it helps to define edges. I always want to make sure that I'm penciling in my sound effects because it makes the typography after the fact a lot easier. Sometimes like with these panels, um, you'll see me just pencil the outline on top of the like the big broad stroke that I've done in the thumbnails. And that works for me too, as long as I did a text that looks nice in the thumbnail. Sometimes that's not the case and I have to kind of go back and re-pencil that area and make sure that the type looks nice. 
You can see from the purple background here that I have the mask in Clip Studio turned on right now. I think I just kind of forgot to turn it off, but I typically like to pencil with the mask turned off. That way I get a little bit of extra of whatever shape that I'm drawing outside of the frame. And if I need to kind of shift things around within the panel, I can do that really easily. It gives me a little bit of extra leeway there. As well as it just kind of gives a little bit of extra reference for things. So if I was having trouble with sort of the alarm clock or the text or maybe even the tabletop on this panel that I'm working on right now, I could kind of extend that outside of the panel shape and give myself a little bit more reference space for that. I also tend to use a straight line brush or a ruler to help anytime I'm doing perspective in the pencils. I will typically not use a ruler or a straight line brush when I'm inking. I'll typically freehand it because I want it to feel a little bit more organic and like it fits in with the other inks. But in the pencils, I make sure that I got those lines really, really straight. And that way I have a guide to kind of work against for the inks. These pages definitely get better the more you do and you find shortcuts and things to kind of guide yourself through your inks a little bit quicker as well. I definitely think this is one of those practice makes improvement kind of deals with the pencils. And I encourage you to just start instead of kind of, you know, waiting for the perfect story or waiting for your skills to evolve to the point where you feel comfortable, like just start. Don't don't wait on it. Don't sit on it. Cause like you're you're gonna find that as you work on these, they improve a lot more. I have a few recommendations for if you're looking for more penciling demos, if you're looking for more information about penciling, or just some really cool comic artists to get inspiration from. We talked about Art of MM on Instagram already. That's um, Mike Magnola. He does the Hellboy comics. Um, I also recommend Sal Good Sam's YouTube channel for demos. There's a link below for an article on penciling that I got a lot of really good information from. They've also got a huge gallery of pencils in like varying looseness, which is interesting to look at. I've linked the Wikipedia article for comic penciling below also. A surprisingly fascinating read. There's a whole section in there about different comic artists penciling techniques. I thought it was fascinating. I also recommend Cosmic Spectrum's YouTube channel. She does a lot of very cool um, work from sketch to inks. You can see a lot of sort of her sketchbook and so how she takes things from a sketch to an illustration. She has more of a comic style. She also has some really interesting comics out right now. That's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll do whatever I can to answer those and point you in the right direction. I hope you guys are enjoying this comic making series. I know I'm enjoying making it. I think it's really interesting to research and fun to kind of compile all of the information that I have gained or intuited through the process. Look out for a video on inking your comics and coloring your comics, as well as hopefully how to send your comic to print coming soon. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you're looking for more content like this, please check out my video on comic setup, comic thumbnailing, and I think we have a few archive streams that have me actually making comics on them if you'd like to check those out. You can support the channel by subscribing, commenting, and liking the video. You can also support the channel by subscribing over on Patreon. We do some really cool monthly benefits, including patron-only time lapses and videos, bi-weekly updates, including sketchbook drops, monthly phone and tablet backgrounds, as well as a four x six mini print. These videos and all of my projects are brought to you by my wonderful patrons, Jesse C, Anthony Jutz, and Tara Billie Jean. Thank you guys so much.